Welcome to Weaves of the Will on YouTube, I'm Suanna. This weekend I visited MCM London Comic Con and I got to see four clips from episode one of The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. In this episode, I'm going to tell you what I saw and just share my general opinion on them. Before we get to that, please like this video, subscribe to our channel for more Wheel of Time content and check out the links in the description below where you can find our website, weavesoftheworld.com. Over there, we update you on all the time TV news that's happening, as well as lots of other fun pieces, opinions and speculation, and stuff about the books as well. So this episode is going to contain spoilers. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. It will contain spoilers. I'm gonna try very hard not to go beyond Eye of the World book one, but there will absolutely be spoilers for episode one of The Wheel of Time. This isn't speculation. I have seen these clips and I'm going to tell you everything that I've seen. I even got this t-shirt from the panel just to prove it. So as I said, there's four clips. Let's get started clip number one. So clip number one is a Gwen's Braden ceremony joining the women's circle. We pan over uh, these cliffs, uh, these rocks above the river. We see lots of women of the two rivers uh, sat across the rocks. Some of them are knitting, some of them are listening. Uh, every woman there has her hair braided and Egwene is sat at the front and she's having her hair braided by Nynaeve. Uh, as Nynaeve is braiding her hair, she's telling her it's lonely to be a woman, uh, but this braid will connect you to us. It will tell you you're always connected to us. Um, this is your passage into adulthood. And she sort of threads some thread into the braid as she's doing it. Egwene is very happy, she's smiling, she's touching her braid, she stands up with Nynaeve. Nynaeve says, it's my honour as the wisdom of the two rivers to welcome you into the women's circle. And then she speaks into Egwene's ear, be strong Egwene and trust the river. And then we see that clip of Egwene being pushed off the cliff by Nynaeve into the river below. I would say Egwene not expecting it. Uh, I don't think she thought that was about to happen. I think she was very surprised. And I, I think um, this probably wasn't something she was prepared for. The water below is quite dangerous. It's uh, She's taken off in the current straight away and she's fighting against it um, quite significantly, um, struggling to get her, her face uh, above the water, and eventually, in a very Sidar metaphor-like, she embraces the river and uh, starts to float down before washing up on shore, and that's where the clip ends. So what I took away from this, my personal opinion, I don't quite understand the relevance of this scene. However, I didn't get to see it, its conclusion. So I'm quite open to the fact that I don't understand where it's going. The river moment I felt could have been used for something different, such as after Egwene has learnt she's ch she can channel, maybe struggled with a few things, uh, maybe while running falls into a river and hears Maureen's voice um, about letting go and embracing and then is able to survive in that moment. I feel like that might have fit better with the story. Um, but if I'm looking at it from an outside perspective as someone who's never read the books, um, it's not boring, it's interesting, I'm intrigued, I want to know why she's been thrown off a cliff, and I can see it entertaining the audience. So clip number two. Clip number two is the wine spring in clip, but it's a little bit extended. So of course by now you've all seen the wine spring in clip that was shown at New York Comic Con. It's that clip, but we get maybe an extra 30 seconds to a minute um, additionally. What happens in that time? Moraine and Lan 
are shown up the stairs of the Wine Spring Inn, while Perrin says to Rand, she looks like a normal person. And Rand is like, shh, you know, you shouldn't say anything. I said I can hear everything. One I said I can. I'm not quite sure what he said there because he whispered it and the con noise was quite loud. Um, and then Nynaeve comes over and says, um, I don't care where she's going. We'll all be happier and safer once she's gone. Almost in a don't worry about it. Stop talking about it reassuring we've got this we'll take care of it situation and the clip ends i'm not going to weigh in too much about this um we've seen the wine spring in we've seen tons of opinions about it um there's there's not a lot more to say about that clip i really liked the idea of perrin and rand um talking about you know she looks normal no 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 she's not normal she's an Aes Sedai they're terrible um that feels very canonly accurate to the stories um and I believed in that moment that it was Rand and Perrin having those discussions and how Nynaeve stepped in and what she said I thought that was great it was very Nynaeve she could have been slightly more irritated but that's just <laughs> my personal opinion I think Maybe they might have toned some of Nynaeve's aggression down slightly, um, which to be honest makes sense because that could be very unlikable on screen. On to clip number three. So clip number three, without a doubt my favourite. It is Winter's Night and it's the start of the Trolloc attacks. This is a big one. So you've not really had very much spoiled for you by now, but this is really going to include a lot of spoilers. So beware. It starts with Moraine and Lan. They're looking over the village. The village is in full celebration. We can hear music, we can see dancing. Moraine is looking over the top. Lan comes behind her and says, the Fade has Trollocs with him, a dozen or so. We need to leave now. Moraine looks down on the village and Lan asks, do you know which one it is? And Moraine says, no and then walks off. The scene then cuts to dancing on the village green. It's not a very green village green. It's been a long winter. It's the village brown. It's definitely very brown, uh, but they're dancing upon it. I have to say the village looks pretty much exactly how we would have imagined it just personally. I thought it was great. Um, There's lots of dancing. If you remember that scene in the trailer where the circle is forming of the of the women dancing, we see that from above and then we sort of pan down into it with the cameras. We see Perrin. He is dancing with Helena Westerman. Now you may remember Helena Westerman uh, has been not acknowledged so much in who she's playing but rumor has it it's Layla Ibarra and the fandom pretty much thinks that's his wife I would say that's his wife he was dancing with her uh, Egwene is dancing with a boy I think she named him Tom again the con noise plus the background noise of the show clip in itself was a little bit difficult to make out he was a young boy younger than her for sure um, they were dancing together and then suddenly something goes through his back and he stumbles forward onto a grain who's like laughing it off, pushing him back. The blood is coming down from his chest. He is looking horrified. He then falls face down onto the ground and behind him, Trollope and they look awesome they look so good i cannot stress how good they look they don't look overly cgi they look real they look proper they are huge they are monstrous they carry these massive massive weapons with them uh, some in like blade shape some more jagged um uh, and acts like in places but they are so big i mean they can literally cut a person in half which they do of course um trollocs are brutal they are relentless they are killing machines 
they start ravishing through the village, which is screaming and is frantic. There is blood everywhere. We see people being butchered down uh, and Trollocs eating them off the floor. It's gory. It's great. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. This was so great. I wanted to see something really vicious on screen because I think that can be very engaging and very uh, captive to an audience that maybe isn't familiar um, with the series. So it was really great to see. Uh, I now talk a little bit about how we saw each of the main characters in these moments. Uh, so we see Egwene terrified, zigzagging. She learned to zigzag um, to sort of avoid what's going on and then she gets uh, knocked over, grabbed, and it's thankfully Nynaeve grabs her, takes her, hides her in the corner. Her brain is screaming, Nynaeve, what are these things? Um, Nynaeve doesn't know. They're just looking out. The village is burning in places and it is, they are just seeing so much death. We then go to the next thing which I believe was Perrin and Helena Westerman. Uh, again, I would say this is his wife. They they ran together. They ran through uh, a little bit of a forge uh, to get into a house um, to seal up the doors. And I would say it's their house. It's their house that they share. That was the impression I got. It's the house that they share and they sealed everything up. Um, so I would say this is, of course, speculation because they didn't absolutely confirm anything here. Um, but I would say that that is someone he lives with and that is um, someone he is involved with, he was dancing with um, on the village green. I think I would confidently 99% say that Helena Westman plays Perrin's wife in this. Uh, the next scene, I believe it cuts... Um, I believe it cuts back to Egwene and Nynaeve. Uh, they're dragging an old man uh, sort of out of harm's way. He's been injured in the leg. Um, Nynaeve is saying, you know, stem the wound. Um, she comes up, she sort of knocks Egwene out the way and ties it up with, with, uh, with rope. Um, and then she goes back and she's sort of caressing his head and telling him everything's okay. Uh, the guy, the man, the old man was whispering something, but I'm not quite sure what he was saying because it was very loud. Um, but he was definitely whispering something and he died. Um, we have this moment and I have to say probably my favourite moment so far I've seen of Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve was the heartbreak on her face. It was just this really silent acting. Um, it, you could see the pain in her um you could see her hands on this man um the helplessness as she looked out onto the village green and didn't know what to do couldn't do anything and Egwene is looking to her for something um and she has nothing uh it kind of reminded me of the moment in the eye of the world when uh, Rand has been traveling with Tam through the Westwood to get back to Eamon's Field and you know he's so I need to just get to Nynaeve I need to get to Nynaeve and when he gets to Nynaeve Nynaeve looks down at Tam and is just like there's nothing I can do and I just it was perfect she was just brilliant in that I did just brilliant I thought that was her best moment I've seen of her so far I really liked it uh, we then cut again and we see Matt this is a very interesting one for me. Um, I would say Barney is the best actor of the bunch, um, like noticeably. He was great. Uh, I couldn't take my eyes off him. I wanted more. Um, he was very believable. He runs into his house. He's screaming at his parents, where are the girls? They don't know where the girls are. I got the impression that Matt was from a very poor family, a very, very poor family. Uh, his parents looked like drunks. His parents 
looked like it was kind of capturing this mo mood of like they don't know where their small children are and it's not an uncommon thing that they don't know where their small children are and he's screaming at the parents and then he runs out of the house back into the danger um just the panic in him was so believable i just felt it so much as he's running through trying to avoid trollocs tripping and rolling over a trolloc who sort of is eating someone on the floor and like looks up at him um but then just carries on eating anyway uh, and that moment on matt's face like it was great <laughs> i have to say he was the standout for me out of the main cast then we cut to Rand and Tam and they are on the Althor farm um, which looks exactly how I imagined it to look. Uh, Bella is whining in, in, um, in the pen and they're sort of inside and they hear it like what's going on and then the door crashes down and a troll comes in with this huge I mean, it's like taller than Randall Thor himself, just this massive blade and Rand is thrown to the floor and he's like screaming, Father, what is that? And Tam sort of like slides down on his belly and grabs a wooden trunk from under the bed and opens it and her and Mark Blade comes out of the sheath and he starts slashing through these trollocs like Anakin Skywalker slashes through younglings it was beautiful Tam was the highlight of the clips in my personal opinion I thought he was just great I wasn't quite sure about Michael Mac El Hatton playing Tam I thought how is Roose Bolton this guy who like typically associate as terrible going to be Tam Alfor the world's greatest dad um he was brilliant he was great uh he's fighting the Trolloc uh but then the Trolloc starts to overpower him pushes him up against the ward uh up against the wall and sort of like pushes his knife into into his like collarbone uh and cuts him and then just as he's sort of um, about to really push in for the kill, uh, from behind a big spike comes through uh, his neck, uh, one of those sort of like pokey sticks that you poke the fire with, kills the Trolloc, he falls down, and Rand has killed a Trolloc, and there is only one Trolloc we know that Rand kills. <laughs> um, he didn't talk, he did not talk, he didn't say a word, but I very much believe it was Narg. Um, description of Narg, the muzzled face, the horns, it was, I, I'm calling it, it was Narg and Narg didn't speak. Um, and then Rand looks to Tam and Tam is saying, I think he said the word, it's drugged. Um, which I thought was very unusual and I watched the clips a few times and I got the word drugged over and over and over again um, It's drugged, you know, you need to go get out of here and uh, Rand is sort of like touching uh, the wound and he's like, no, we'll get you to Nynaeve And that was it <laughs> and, um, Just as you were just fully absorbed they cut it and that was uh, the best clip that I saw. It was incredible. Uh, 10 out of 10 for Trollocs. They were awesome. Alfor Farm, awesome. Tam, awesome. Matt, awesome. Didn't get to see enough of Perrin. Definitely has a wife. Narg didn't speak. I'm not mad at that because I've pretty much gone on record before saying I don't think he should because it never really made sense that one Trolloc talked but then they never did again. I think it's more of a this is a nod to the fandom. Hey, there's Narg. Um, but to anyone else, it's not going to be a thing, which is fine. It gets to remain our thing, and that's that's always a cool thing to have. Um, yeah, I 
I had really great moments with Nynaeve as well. I, I just think um, overall the violence was really good. It wasn't too much um, in, you know, uh, in, in things like Game of Thrones, sometimes it was so forced in your face um, to see someone's head being cut off or to see such horrors, but it wasn't right in there. It was just enough. Um, it might get significantly worse. This was really just the start, I imagine. I imagine it's going to get much worse. I know from Moraine's quest clip, we've seen um, a Gwen with her mother screaming through the fire. Um, so there's definitely more to come from that scene. Um, I didn't see anything of Moraine or Lan Chanlin, so my guess is they hadn't made their way down from where they were into the village yet. I believe this was just the beginning, um, so it could get way more, but it, start, it was a great start, it was a great start. My last and final thoughts from that, yeah, I do think they're going to change Matt's story. Um, I think Matt's going to be from a poor family. Uh, which makes sense then why he would go to steal a dagger uh, when he's been told not to steal anything from this place. I think instead of being that cheap, cheeky, scampish rogue, he's maybe going to be more of that thief that we know in the village um, who comes from a bit of a crappy family but has a heart of gold um, as is seen by the fact that he clearly is the one who takes care of his little sisters. Um, I think uh, Egwene, Nynaeve, I, I, don't, I don't really quite know where that's going, but they were great. Uh, Perrin and his wife, there's obviously a lot of rumors there that we don't see the wife character beyond. Who knows, who knows? I don't know where that's going. It didn't really uh, give much away. Tam, brilliant, brilliant. So onto clip number four, this is the final clip. There's a little bit of controversy in this one. Um, there's a couple of things I'm like about, I think some people will be absolutely fine with it, it won't even be a problem. For me, just a couple of little things that I don't quite enjoy, uh, but let's get into it. So the clip is them leaving the two rivers. My personal opinion, this is the end of the episode and uh, I'll tell you why I think that uh, at the end. Um, it starts with, uh, it's morning, morning has come, uh, we're looking sort of over the village brown, lots of things are, have been on fire, uh, there's <laughs> carcasses, there's people groaning in pain, um, being helped, being healed, and uh, we can see Lan and Moraine sort of assessing the damage um, and Rand, Perrin, Matt and Egwene are together. Um, there's, I, don't, I didn't see Nynaeve at all at this point. Um, those four are together. Rand sort of goes, these things, what are these things? They never came here before you did. You show up and here they are. And Moraine turns and says, um, they're here for the same thing that I'm here for, for you. And it focuses very much on Rand. And then she goes, for all of you. One, two, three, four. So that includes Egwene, not just the boys. Um, she then talks about how she learned of a secret um, 20 years ago. The Dark Ones, um, the, the shield on the Dark One is weakening and he soon to touch the world. She heard of a secret from an Aes Sedai born with eyes so white she could not see, yet she could see the tapestry of the wheel, of the turnings of the wheel, I think was the exact words. Um, don't quote me. <laughs> um, she then said, um, about the the dragon being reborn and um that the dragon is one of you again she says that to the four not to the three to all four the dragon is one of you she also then says that they have to leave lan sort of looks up to 
towards the mountains and you can see a uh, pitchfork um like torches uh coming down and like some like chanting and a grain is like what the hell is that and um lan is like trollocs at least 300 how did they get here so fast Moraine's like we have to leave and Egwene is like you can't just leave us and she's like no the four of you have to leave they the dark one wants one of you four um and then she says that um she can't do anything to help the village with that many trollocs and they have to go uh so Matt is she's you know she re she reiterates about how one of them is the dragon and Matt's like you're barking and she like smiles like ha, ha, ha. um they have to leave and then it sort of cuts away and it's them leaving on horse um in the daytime with their families waving them off uh so we see Tam Tam is fine he's you know by Rand. We see the Alvears Bran, we see Marion uh, waving off Egwene, we see the Cawthorns and the two girls waving off Matt. No one is there to wave off Perrin. Not one person. I didn't see many of either in that. Um, and then Moraine uh is uh, a voiceover the will of time turns and ages come and pass leaving memories la 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 and uh i would say that's the end of the episode i felt very much like we see them sort of riding away into the distance we see the trollocs in the background um we have that monologue going across the top i could imagine end titles in that moment so i'd say that's the end of the episode this is where I think it could get a little bit controversial. I actually wrote an opinion piece uh, on the Weaves of the Will uh, before I saw these clips, actually. After Maureen's quest came out, I looked at it and I thought it was very interesting that Maureen kept referring to the dragon as they, and that who is the dragon reborn brought up four images across the screen, and it was the three boys and Egwene. And I felt it very much hinted that Egwene was gonna be a possible candidate to be the dragon reborn. And I can honestly tell you when I, I shared them in some places, they were like, no, that's ridiculous. Like you're just making this crap up. It's not ridiculous. <laughs> it's there, I saw it. Um, if if you were thinking that this is a possible theory, if you were hoping that it wasn't, no, it's, it's very much there. I'm not, I hope it's more of a thing along the lines of the four of you need, it was very clever in the words of not saying outright, one of you four is the dragon but just one of you, all four of you have to leave, one of you is the dragon, and addressing the four. I'm hoping this may be a little bit of bait and switch um, in that the audience believes it's Egwene, but it can't possibly be Egwene, um, and that she just wants Egwene to leave with her rather than explain, it's because you can channel and I need to get you to the White Tower. Just, that's my, that's my hope of what it is. I don't know if that is what it's going to be. Um, I think, I think personally, the one of the core themes of the story is the hatred towards men, the fear of the dragon because he will be a man, um, and the fear of a savior that will go mad before he can potentially save the world is very much something that's written into the prophecies, very much engraved into the bones of the people of the Westlands, and is significant to the core themes of the story. I think if you take away um, the fact that the dragon absolutely has to be a man, it makes the dragon less frightening. It makes it less of a frightening prospect. I mean, yes, the end of the world is still terrifying, but I feel like if I'm living in a world where Aes Sedai are in charge and they've got magic and they're powerful, and I think, oh, an Aes Sedai could be the dragon, it's less. It's like, yeah, she's she's got this, she's fine. Um, so I would feel more like that. I know, I'm com I'm fully confident that Egwene will not be the dragon. I'm fully confident that Rand will still end up the dragon. So as long as we still get from A to B, does it really matter? Ah, these are just my personal feelings. It could be fine, it could be fine. Um, I think I had a much bigger issue though with them waving them off in the daylight because I don't 
then understand why Nynaeve goes after them. That was a big question mark for me. Why then would Nynaeve chase after these people whose parents have basically said, yeah, they have to go, bye. Why then would she be involved in that? I can't then see where that story is going to fit in or how that's going to fit in quite the way I want it to. Um, hope for the best. <laughs> uh, but that was definitely something I, I didn't like. Also, the way the Trollocs were um, positioned, the way they were coming down, it didn't matter if they were going to leave or not. The Trollocs were going to run through the village. Just the way it looked on screen, they're going to come through the village and they're just going to finish it off anyway. Um, so it kind of felt a little bit like, you know, say goodbye to everyone because you'll never see them again um, because the Trollocs are going to eat them. That's just my opinion. Obviously, you take it as you want. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of how I felt about that final one. I felt the final one was a little bit controversial. Um, I thought it was interesting, um, Katara going from Hair of White to Eyes of White. I'm not mad at that, I think that's pretty cool. I think a lot of oracles are blind, um, and it would be that association in someone's mind who's a new, who's new to the series, who's never read it before. Oh yes, that person was then an oracle, that's why she looked like that. Um, they didn't mention Katara by name, but it's Katara. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much the whole thing um my final thoughts on this overall i thought it looked great it didn't look overly cgi'd uh, everything looked very real the sets looked great the costumes were perfect um dare i say it um the costume and the attention to detail was really really special um i totally felt like i was watching what i I've read in the pages um, in terms of the way that the hair was braided, um, the costumes uh, were sort of wrapped, the, the walls, the fabrics, they all looked really, really great. Would have liked to have seen a few more sheep. Um, <laughs> just just for that little, yes, this is Eamon's Field, which interestingly, it was never referred to as Eamon's Field, it was the Two Rivers. Um, which again, when I think to all the promotional material, I don't think I've heard Eamon's Field. I think I've always heard the two rivers. I might be wrong on that though. So feel free to correct me in the comments if I am. Um, but yeah, I, I overall, I thought it looked really great. Um, I didn't feel, um, a young adult vibe from it. Maybe a little bit in the women's circle clip, but not in the rest of it, which I was really pleased about. Um, because I think with the, the poster, the, the pink one with the merge roll across the top, I got a very young adult vibe from that. And that made me a little bit nervous. Um, but that, I didn't get that from it at all. Um, I spoke to a few people who watched it who weren't familiar with the series and they thought it looked very Game of Thrones, a little bit of Lord of the Rings. Um, I heard Divergent. Um, I heard a little bit of Harry Potter, but I think that was mainly coming from the poster they were looking at. I think a lot of people said, yeah, that poster looks sort of Harry Potter. Um, if you're interested, there will be a link at the end of this video uh, you can go and watch uh, some of the reactions from non-fans uh, and they'll tell you what they thought of the clips. Totally spoiler free. Um, not that it matters at this point, but it's totally spoiler free so anyone can watch it. Um, and just they'll give you the sort of sense that they got from it and whether they would watch it. So that's it. The full breakdown of uh, the Will of Time clips at MCM Comic Con. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe please share as well and help our channel grow we uh, have a lot of people who who make things for this channel who make things for the website and your support is greatly appreciated so uh, until next time may the light be with you